Hello everybody, my name is Trevor Ursulescu and I'm the owner of Monster Hobbies in High River, Alberta, Canada. Well, I was going through my old collection and I found a couple of the model kits that I used to build. And, um, you know, for slot car racing, we'll end up going into Formula One race cars. And um, when I was a kid, I was into race cars and model cars and that quite a lot. And uh, being a Romanian descendant in Canada, sort of thing. I was always looking at um, old race car pictures and they'd show the international colors of around the world and they they would show um, France as being a light powder blue, uh, Germany as being white and then later silver, Italy red, Ferrari red, you know this sort of thing. And uh, I was always curious on what the colors for Romania would be. And Interestingly enough, I came across a book in the library back in the 1980s and it had a list in the back of the book and it actually showed what each of the colors were, you know, um, uh, for these different things that you don't really see too much of. Uh, Holland being orange with white numbers. Um, Egypt was, I believe, oh, Egypt is a light um, purple color, a violet or somewhere in there. So, when I was young, I looked this up, and it said Romania was a dark blue color, had yellow numbers, and a red hood. And I've been looking on the internet recently, trying to find this, and, well, at any rate, this is a model that I built at the time when I was 11 years old, henceforth the numbers on the vehicle. So I'm just going to show this to you. So this is the model. It's AMT's... 1949 Ford but when I built this when I was 11 there's the number so you got the blue body the yellow numbers and this red hood it's it's the, the tricolors of Romania red yellow blue and oh I was gonna say when I built this model I was 11 at the time and I found the AMT 49 Ford grill hard to put in because it has those little teeny parking lights that are part of this central bar here. So I used the 50 Ford grill from the uh, the convertible kit, the same kit. And you know, I, oh, I painted this all with a brush. Now if you catch that light pattern right there, you'll see that it looks sort of shredded like a sound wave. That's actually reflecting the, the uh, paintbrush pattern into it. And it's not too bad. Mind you, I'm 11 when I built this, so... I mean, you look at the blue. The paint's held out. This is the old testers enamel that we used to all have. Now, I used to have chrome, well, silver paint going up and around. Sorry for the glare there. Going up and around the molding. And it's rubbed off, because whenever I pick up cars, I pick them up like this. Which tends to rub that off. Um, but, you know, the paint, it's held over the years, sort of a little thin in areas. The door handle fell off, it's sitting inside, haven't glued it, glued it back on. You know, a little bit rough with the brushes around the trim line to what I can do now. But of course we're talking 11, now I'm 41. This car, <laughs> hate to think about it like this, this model that I built is 30 years old. Yeah, so there you go, but even at the time, I covered the basics. I made sure that no matter how you turn this over, whoop, there goes the handle right into the slot car slot. That's going to be fun to get out. The only thing you'll notice is color, uh, plastic, original plastic color on this, is the front axle, which I don't know why I didn't use a metal rod in that instead of a plastic one. And the headlight covers. Those are the only pieces that are plastic. Now, if this was entered in, in a model kit show, a lot of people will look at this and disqualify you that, on that. So whenever you build models, make sure you paint everything. Yeah, see, there's another bit of it too that I should have done, but I had hinges on there that got broken off, that's why. Um, make sure you paint everywhere in these models, because this is what judges look for in model kit contests. If you are wondering why you're 
Like if you're entering to get first, second, and third, and you're wondering why you're not, make sure you have painted everything and showing no bare plastic. That's one of the uh, basics for model build car building. Anyway, here's the thing that that I'm wondering about. When you type in international race car colors, and this is something I'm hoping somebody will answer for me. You type in international race car colors for Romania, and I have never seen what they described in that book with the red hood. In fact, I've never even seen anything that looked like an international race car color uh, car in that. All I can find is France, Italy, Germany, Holland, nothing on Romania. So was that book right or wrong or where is, you know, there's no like 1931 Bugatti with a red hood, you know, proudly saying, you know, this is Romania for king and country or, you know, anything of that era kind of stuff. I don't know where they came up with this or if it's even there. So if somebody can send me some pictures of something real out of a museum or somewhere in there with international colors, or maybe they, they don't call it international colors when they're going to Romania. Maybe it's like La Color du International or something. Uh, okay, better learn it in real Romanian there, but something to that effect or La Color de Historical. I'm trying to say French really badly here. <laughs> but yeah, so because what I want to do for our upcoming slot car league is paint my F1 racer in something similar to what this is. Red, blue, but I just need some actual justification is, is that really a thing or is it not? But anyway, I found that this Ford kit is really enjoyable to build, goes together easily. And uh, the interior, they give you lots of options. This was one of the cars that George Barris worked on back in the day, the king of customizers. Um, all customizers worked on the real 40, 4950 Fords. It was one of their favorite ones. They would section out a piece and drop it and chop the top down and then put all kinds of uh, later 50s touches into it. George Barris had a front end that if you get the convertible kit, it's got quad headlights, comes down to a nice little grill opening, the hood extends out and goes down into it, all this kind of cool stuff. So these cars have really had their their time. Uh, one of the funny things I did, I guess I didn't realize it at the time, but now I do. Hubcaps on a race car. There's no time. As you're going around the race course, there's no time to like hammer a hubcap on there because time is every second counts in a race. So these would all be exposed with lug nuts sticking out so that the guys could zip the gun guns on them, change a tire if it blows in under like 13 seconds or however long it takes and get yeah like the car comes into a pit they ram the jack underneath one guy's pumping the jack up while the other guy's unbolting the wheels as the car's going up locks it into place the the lug nuts come off the guys rip the wheel off there's a tire right beside the other guy puts it back on zaps the things on they unwind the jack in a hurry drop the car down on the ground driver gives the signal and he's off they wouldn't sit there and hammer a hubcap back on it would be like trying to align it back into the slot when everyone's all under high pressure and everything. Yeah, it just would not happen. But anyway, I don't know, I guess it kind of does dress it up a little bit. And you notice I used all the yellow, yellow lettered sponsorship decals, Wyland, Liston shocks. I think some of this I even have duplicated at the time back in the eighties. There was no searching up what these sponsors did. You know, what, and pens oil is oil, we know that. But things like that, eh? We, so, when we were kids, we'd have like STP sitting right there, or Champion Spark Plug sitting beside, um, you know, Ford Spark Plugs, it's double sponsorship, whose spark plugs are you running, sort of thing, right? <laughs> All this crazy stuff, but this is the joys of model building. You, you build it, you learn, and you improve. I mean, now if I was, could, to uh, duplicate this car again, I would use bare metal foil around the trim. I'd spray paint it. I'd, uh, you know, not have the brush strokes. I'd either use decals or I'd better engineer the numbers. Um, for example, like taking masking tape and printing off computer numbers 
and then positioning that over top of the masking tape and then cutting out the computer letters right through the masking tape so that the masking tape made a proper mask, sticking the mask over top of here and then painting it in that way, peeling the mask off and you'd have it more perfected than how I did it. I think I just used strands of masking tape in a straight line. In fact, that's almost apparent. And then I just, like on the 11 up here, I just hand painted the bottom and the top to make it work. Well, I don't know. But yeah, check out the models, Monster Hobbies. Lots of fun. We'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Now here's something I just want to show you quickly. There's my model kit that I built in the 80s. This is a model kit that one of my customers gave me that was an earlier issue of the same kit. Now, I don't know how earlier this is. I'm going to have to look through some old instructions and figure it out. But if you notice under the hood on mine, it has holes here and here. They put in hood hinges that looked sort of realistic, plastic ones, of course, not functional. And they had them go here and here. So that when you click the hood in, they would fit into those slots. On the original here, or this earlier version, they had a hole right in the dead center. And underneath the hood, there's a little tab. They had a metal hinge, it was a horseshoe shape, clicked underneath there. You'd open it up and click the hood up and close it and then your metal hinge would pop off the bottom because it didn't stick on too well. But it's kind of interesting to see the differences. And here's another thing. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. See that light reflection there? How it's all wrinkly? This model was spray painted by somebody. And that is orange peel from not spraying it. To, uh, uh, there's, there's conditions. If you look it up on the internet, you'll find out car paint, orange peel, and all the problems with it. Um, it was a nice build. There's a lot of things that he didn't paint, but it's kind of cool because AMT, this gray plastic they used, is really old. Another thing is these hubcaps are either Dodge Lancer or Oldsmobile, um, like the Fiesta Olds. These are original issue. They haven't been used since. So that's kind of the cool part about it. It's all unpainted there. Um, and one other thing I want to show you. So remember the orange peel. I'll just cover this side. There's your orange peel there. There's a product on the market. It's called a LGM Polishing Kit or an LMG. I can't remember because I don't have the box here. <laughs> it's sandpapers that go from 1800 grit to 12,000 grit. My set's old. I'm, I'm going to try to see if I can get this again. But I polished this hood, and I want to show you this. There's the orange peel side, what we originally started with. Now, unfortunately, this fellow's spray painting was inconsistent. So when I used the polishing kit, it cut through the color. But look at the light refraction. It's a curve, because the hood is concave and whatever, but... That's a straight line. This is neon lights. You can see how shiny this is. The polishing kit, after you get to 12,000 grade, which is a <laughs> what they use for polishing jewelry and diamonds, you then wax it and you use a swirl remover. If you catch this, you can see the reflection of the roof in the hood. I'll just take a quick walk. I've got so here we are under these bulbs. Uh, catch that. You can actually see, if you look carefully enough, the light reflecting those bulbs in a mirror quality, perfectly round. That's the type of quality, if you're getting into these big model car shows and that, and you really want to get first place, this is the type of reflection that the judges will be knocked out of their minds with if they see it because it's it's the perfect reflection like get a, there is your light bulb <laughs> so uh yep yeah, i'll see if i can get these kits in and uh hope you enjoyed that little bit of uh paint perfection i don't know even though i cut through anyway 
have fun. And we'll talk to you later. Bye.